Hey guys, uh, sorry I'm a little bit late with this, uh, but I was way too exhausted to uh, do it last night since I got back home really late, but um, I wanted to express my thoughts on the Agalock show that I went to yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna get this out of the way really quick because uh, I really wanted to express my thoughts on this. Okay, so um, like last evening, I have probably posted about this on Facebook, I um, went to see Agaloc for the first time. I've been a fan of them for like a few years now, since about 2011 or something, right around the time Arrow of the Spirit was released. And um, uh, let me tell you, I really had to see them live. I didn't think I was ever going to get the chance to, be or maybe not ever, but I know they typically don't really come around... Um, America all that much, even though they are an American band, they typically like to go to Europe and more like uh, out there locations and stuff like that, maybe around their hometown of Portland and stuff, but I remember I had a chance to see them uh, last year, but um, the very night that they played last year was when I um, went to see Iron Maiden, so I missed my chance there, I didn't think I'd get another one for a while, and then and now here we are, right here. I have to admit, it was kind of hard trying to uh, find this location. Um, like, most of these gigs tend to be just kind of hidden. Like, uh, you just pass by it and you wouldn't even notice it. I I've passed by it quite a few times because uh, um, Echo Park, where um, this venue is, um, I don't know, I don't really like the look of Echo Park all that much. It seems very, like, um, densely... Uh, congested, uh, very sketchy in some places, I don't know, uh, but, I don't know, that's LA for you, uh, I mean, I don't actually live there, but, anyway, I'm, I'm sidetracking, I'm talking about the location where the venue is, not the actual concert, let's talk about the concert. The awesome news was that it was Sunday, so, um, free parking, I basically went to a lot, I thought I had to pay like 10 bucks or something, free so uh, I just left my car to go and uh, I went over to the venue um, I guess for some reason there's like two levels to this venue I am um, I was like on the upper level I guess I was on this like elevated street which is a uh, Sunset Boulevard and uh, I just walk over to the venue I'm asking oh can I just go inside and pay my tickets for Agalock and they said oh uh, I think uh, the venue for Agalock's downstairs I'm like what and I guess uh, there was actually a like a much more hidden venue uh, downstairs somewhere or like below the street and there's like a whole line of other metalheads and stuff all guys wearing black like me I'm um, basically just waiting outside of like this little um, strange parking lot area you could have uh, sworn there wasn't a venue there but I guess it's pretty hidden uh, you could have uh, barely noticed it so anyway, yeah, I get in line. I uh, actually uh, talked to a few people about like um, upcoming concerts, concerts we've been to before. We talk a bit about Winter Sun and Mortal and stuff. So uh, just talking to people waiting in line, uh, we're definitely uh, passing the time and stuff. We have a good chat. Um, then uh, we uh, get inside, and um, this was actually a pretty nice looking venue, I have to say, for one that hosts like more extreme bands like Agaloc and the like uh there it actually was a uh, pretty cozy looking there's some uh there's like a lounge in the back where you could just sit down relax and uh watch at the uh, TV screen with the uh, concert that's literally like right there across the room um there's also a free uh, water dispenser you don't have to buy like water bottles or anything so uh, I also get to just get some free water and stuff like that there's a merch table where they're selling um, Agaloc merch. They're selling uh, the opening band merch. Uh, anyway, uh, I actually I uh, did pick up some merch just to let you know. Uh, this is from one of the opening bands right here. This is, uh, what's it called? Uh, Come the Thaw from uh, Worm Ouroboros. Sorry, I can't pronounce the name. But um, I'll talk about their um, like performance in a bit. But... Um, this is actually a really cool, like, uh, dark, ambient, shoegazy sort of music, whatever. Um, you kind of have to see for yourself. I'd never even heard this band until uh, the concert itself, but um, they, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll get into their performance in a bit. I just wanted to show off the merch, but this is from one of the opening bands. 
and uh, of course I'm gonna have to get into my Agalock merch right here. Here is the uh, Faustian Echo ZP. Um, very cool looking. Really like that. Oh, and uh, I forgot to show you the inside of the uh, Come They Thaw. Or, yeah, Come the Thaw. Uh, album. This is from last year, I believe. So yeah, they're both digipacks, which is cool. Um, and I also got an Agalock t-shirt. This is awesome. This is a uh, Pale Folklore, I believe. Um, there's also some really cool uh, writing on the back. I think these are lyrics from the song Dead Winter Days. So yeah, love that song. Love these lyrics. Love this font. Um, it's just, yeah. Definitely love it. It was at a reasonable price. Uh, the ticket itself was actually pretty cheap too. Uh, I think I've paid for a cheaper ticket for like a really like unknown like black metal show that had like all these bands that you wouldn't have known about. But this is like the cheapest the cheapest ticket that I've paid for like a more well known band like Agalock. So um, yeah, definitely very reasonably priced. The staff was also uh, very nice and helpful as well, uh, because uh, especially during this one moment where um, during the uh, opening act, uh, her name is Helen Money. She's a cello player. I think she played on uh, Anthrax's uh, Worship Music and uh, I think something from Disturbed, but I don't know and I don't care. But um, like during her opening number, I... Um, dropped my wallet I was uh, this close to like losing everything and um, I was like basically pacing around the room trying to find it and uh, I guess the security guard um, I think he might have been watching me just trying to pace around looking for my wallet and he's like oh do you need any help I'm like yes uh, I'm trying to look for my brown wallet and uh, he uh, goes over follows me and stuff has a flashlight out and uh, what do you know, it was like right uh, just on the ground, on the pit floor. So uh, I managed to get that in time before anyone ever thought about taking it. I think uh, I might have lost it for like five minutes or something like that. Somebody easily could have picked it up. But uh, fortunately, the room was uh, very dark, so nobody could really see it or anything. And uh, that was part of the problem for uh, why I initially lost it, so I couldn't really see anything. But fortunately, the security guard had a flashlight, and I was able to get my wallet safe and sound. You can see it right there on my bed right there. So <laughs> that was definitely very, um, that was just awesome of him. Uh, if he is watching this video, thank you so much for finding my wallet. I mean, it really means a lot. I have pretty much everything in there, so uh, yeah, that was a close one. Yeah, um, that just goes to show they have really helpful and awesome staff members. Alright, now to the actual performers. Uh, Helen Money, like I said, was the one opening everything up. She is a cello player. Um, she's played on a few metal albums before, like as a guest player or something, but um, I think uh, she had a very unique style of playing. Uh, it's just her and her cello, and um, like sometimes she'll just play it like a regular cello and stuff, like offering more classical passages. But then uh, she'll drop the bow and uh, she'll just start um, basically strumming the uh, cello with her hand, pretty much like an, a guitar. And uh, she used a lot of like distortion effects to uh, basically have it play like a guitar and stuff, and. Uh, Damn, she can uh, definitely play that jello. Um, I remember uh, she um, had some more uh, metal music uh, playing in the background just so she'd be able to like play along with that. There's some like automated drums in the background, but um, she was definitely really good. Um, I mean, I wouldn't listen to it regularly or anything like that, but um, she definitely had a very unique. Um, way of playing the cello and stuff. I can imagine why Anthrax and Disturbed would want her to like uh, guest star on an album to offer a more like classical flavor if you will because she could definitely uh, play it up if you know what I mean. So yeah she did really good. Um, the next uh, band of course was uh, Worm Ouroboros or however you say it. Sorry if I uh, mispronounced it. Um, this is the first time I'd ever heard of the band. I um, 
heard that the uh, drummer for Agaloc, Aesop, is also the drummer for this band. So uh, Aesop Dekar is basically the drummer for both of these bands. So um, he got some uh, extra time to um, warm up, if you will, for Agaloc, because uh, this band definitely... Uh, plays a much slower style. Um, like I said before, they're like more dark ambient, shoegazy sort of style, but um, it was definitely very mesmerizing. I have to say I was really impressed with um, what they were doing. Uh, I think there's like two uh, women on stage. Uh, one of them plays bass, the other one plays guitar. They both do vocals and um, they definitely have like a lot of reverb and stuff which produces like a very like atmospheric and uh, chilling effect on stage um, and after listening to this album a bit it actually sounds very much like it does on the album so um, that goes to show um, that the actual concert venue itself had some really good sound quality and stuff uh, I was definitely very impressed with the sound overall um, Maybe a bit loud, but um, at the same time, you could hear everything very clearly, especially the vocals. And um, I don't really have much to say about um, a Worm Ouroboros' uh, um, performance, because uh, they definitely did a really good job, basically uh, setting up a very um, a nice, entrancing atmosphere. I thought it was pretty interesting that they actually wrapped their uh, mic stands up with the Christmas lights. I can actually uh, show you a picture or, or two of that if you want. Um, although I can actually uh, show you a uh, video link right here. Uh, this is a, um, a video performance I um, filmed of them performing one of the songs off of uh, their newest album, which is uh, Withered. I listened to uh, that back and forth. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Withered, I believe, is the song that they played that I uh, filmed on my iPhone. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, the link's up there. If you want to see it, it's on my music channel to avoid copyright on my uh, main channel and stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, I really like their performance. I had to go uh, buy one of their albums to show my support. I definitely am uh, going to follow this band quite a bit because they definitely had me going. They are definitely... They are in themselves a new fan. So, um, anyway, on to Agaloc. Alright, the one band that I decided to trek through LA's congested traffic for, Agaloc. John Hom and the boys. Anyway, they've probably put on one of the all-time greatest shows I've ever been to, period. Um, um, when you first see them, they do like a little sound check on stage, basically just to warm up, get everything into gear, make sure everything's working. And uh, they walk off stage, the lights dimmer, then like out, of, out backstage you see um, an orange light glowing. You see John Hom on stage with some incense burning. He um, lights some more incense on stage and it fills the entire room up with this beautiful fragrance, this just powerful aroma that reminds one of walking through the Oregon woods. It's just a beautiful smell. It just provides a ton of atmosphere until um, the inevitable weed comes to drown that smell out. So, um, yeah, that's kind of disappointing, but like for that short period of time that you got to smell that fragrance it's just it's beautiful it, it provides a ton of atmosphere you know that you're about to see one hell of a band that just goes above and beyond um, playing your typical metal shit um, they just know how to provide the right amount of atmosphere and kick-ass heavy metal at the same time they definitely provided a very, like, heavy killer set list. They opened up with uh, Limbs, then they went to Ghosts of the Midwinter Fires, which uh, I also uh, filmed an Agaloc song, too. Uh, here's uh, the uh, Agaloc song that I filmed, if you guys want to check that out, too. It's on my music channel, again, to avoid copyright on my main channel here. But uh, anyway, so yeah, there you go. Worm, uh, Wormel, Ouroboros, and Agaloc the songs I filmed right there. Um, yeah, so we go into that, then after that is Falling Snow, uh, they go into Hallways of Enchanted Ebony, then I believe they go into, um, 
Um, I, I can't think right now. Uh, it's all just uh, jumbled around in my mind because I'm just still very excited with what happened. But anyway, you still get uh, some great songs all around. Um, I'm, I guess I'm a little, maybe, I, I couldn't say disappoint. I can't really say disappointed because uh, it's Agaloc, but maybe just a little, just kind of eh, at the fact that the, they didn't play anything off the mantle, their second album. Uh, they played um, songs from every other album except for the mantle, which, um, you know, kind of let me down a bit because I was hoping they play in the shadow of our pale companion just so I could light my lighter up in the air. But, eh, whatever, who cares. Um, I can't really complain too much because they put on just a fantastic, fantastic performance. Every song they played just kept me in the mood. It was no bullshit all the way through. They really just kicked it into high gear. And to my left, I actually noticed, like, this big mosh pit that was forming, which, um... I kind of expected because it was a black metal show and they played some really crushing stuff like Into the Painted Grey, but at the same time I was also thinking, it's Agaloc, this is like very like atmospheric, like much more like relatively chill stuff compared to like Opeth and stuff like that, yeah. um, but um, you know, it was just, it was kind of interesting to see, I, I had no problem with it, I mean hey, it's, it's black metal, but the same time, Agalux just one of those really like atmospheric bands. You'd almost um, I I wouldn't say never expected, but um, you wouldn't expect as much as you would. Which um yeah, it was definitely very interesting to see, and it was great to see people really getting into the music and having fun because it definitely just made the experience all the better. Unfortunately, I actually had to leave before, like, the encore. I heard they played of Stone, Wind, and Pillar off of their, uh, the EP of Stone, Wind, and Pillar, and they played the Our Fortress is Burning suite from Ashes Against the Grain, which, you know, I unfortunately had to miss because it was already very late by the time I got out. Like, when they were done with, like, their first, um, set list and stuff, like, when Into the Painted Grey was done, I actually had to leave because it was, like, 1230 or something like that and I actually had school in the morning like at 10 a.m. which I mean I guess it's not too bad but um, still it's still kind of uh, I mean I live like an hour away from LA so it was still uh, pretty crazy and just how late this ran but it was so worth it in the long run I am so glad I made it to this because I'm not really sure how often Agalox is going to come back Although I've heard Agaloc really love performing in L.A., so um, I'll probably get more chances in the future. Uh, I've heard they've been touring here a lot more frequently in the past couple of years, so hey, might get another chance after all. Okay, I think I'm going to have to stop this video now because it's pushing the 20-minute mark. Um, I'm honestly just rambling off the top of my head what I liked about the show and stuff. But um, anyway... I'm speechless about this. Uh, this was just a phenomenal show. If Agaloc comes by your area, hell, even if uh, Worm or uh, fuck it, I'll just say W O uh, or even Hell and Money, if any of those bands come by your your area, um, definitely check them out. Definitely, um, it's definitely worth a, an experience, especially Agaloc. And this is a band that only comes once in a lifetime. You definitely want to experience this for yourself. Uh, no video can really, truly do them justice. Even though I filmed, like, a song or two from each of these bands, just see it live. You really have to experience it for yourself. Just, um, I, honestly, I, I can't really uh, say anything else without repeating myself, so I, I'm done. Thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you guys later.